Come to say, I woke. Yes, I <laughs> Well, Earl, good afternoon. I would like to say happy Sunday to all the people and them in St. Croix, the Virgin Islands, everybody who could hear us, listen to us. Hey, today is a day of championship racing. As you hear the warm up team in the back of me is warming up the dragster. Hey, a local owned female gonna be running this car. As I talk to the owner, Gary Thomas, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about his animal team and tell us where his animal team have gone to. Gary Thomas, welcome to Channel 6. Tell us a little bit about this car, Gary. Yeah, um, good evening. Uh, my name is Gary Thomas. I'm the owner of this uh, dragster here. It's a 2002 Mike Boss uh, dragster. Um, it's uh, powered by a Chevrolet 454 uh, motor and um, driven by Miss V here our local female that um, holds the, the fastest woman in the Caribbean record. So um, the animal racing team comprised of uh, this dragster, uh, my cobalt over there, uh, Camaro, um, 68 Camaro, and uh, 1990 Donas Barretta. Uh, we have gone over the world, all over the world to race. We hold records in Antigua, we hold records in in the Bahamas, we hold the record in um, Santo Domingo. We hold records in uh, um, Antigua. Um, I mean, we have been all over the place uh, setting records, holding records. We, we still hold some. Some of them we've lost. Uh, Aruba, we lost a record. Santo Domingo, we lost a record. Someone else holds it now. But every place else that we've been in the Caribbean, we still hold the record. We've raced in um, Jersey. Um, I mean... Uh, English town. I mean, we've been all over, racing all over. So um, I am proud of what we, we do. We do it as a team and um, we are very successful at what we do. We do this because we love it and um, I'm just going to keep doing this. All right, well, you know, that was uh, the owner of the animal team. Uh, I would like to ask Ms. B uh, uh, a question. Ms. B, Tell us how you feel in the cockpit and how much miles you have gone and how it feel to go such tremendous miles on, on a racetrack. Tell the ladies about it, Miss B. Well, I must say that it is, it gives you an adrenaline rush. Um, I encourage a lot of more females to come out and, you know, jump in the seat and, you know, show the guys what we could do. Um, the fastest I've gone is about 800. 186 miles per hour, running seven seconds with them shutting me down. Um, I would love to go a little bit more faster, let's say up in the six, the low six, if they would allow me to. 186 miles per hour. Seven seconds. And that's just backing it out. Yes. All right, once again, you're here from Ms. B as we take you around the track today and tell you what it's all about. Not too close. Okay, I got it. That's the team on the top of the drug star. What the name of this is now? Insane. Yeah, but what the name of the car? What the name of the car is? Insane. Insane, but what are you, you thinking? Rat infested? Insane? You need to come to me. Once again, um, Earl, we're here with Insane Racing, owned by one of our uh, presidents on the track. We have Insane team here, and they have this wonderful car. It's a Cobalt, and it's a Beretta. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm every Cobalt is a Beretta. And we'll talk to Mr. Epperson and let him tell us a little bit more about his car. Well, um, we got a challenge from St. Martin, so the car was in Puerto Rico. We brought it up here. So we're trying to defend the crown here on St. Croix. So, as you can see, um, 1990 Beretta, uh, it can hold its own. I let the camera do the talking and the starting line. But other than that, I'm glad to have you guys out here and we plan to make this thing bigger and better every time we go around. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again, Mr. Vince Epperson. Um, what, 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 what are you looking forward to today, Epi? What, what are you looking to accomplish here today at the racetrack? I'm trying to bring the sport back, as you know, you got um, a whole bunch of stuff happening around and trying to pull and tug at the roots, but I think the main roots are in place. 
uh, trying to bring the sport back to, to a high level where we know it can be and will be and continue to be. All right, Epi. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Once again, the Channel 6 viewers, we have turbulence. Turbulence being a car here that turned upside down the track as we talk to Mr. O'Reilly himself, and he's going to tell us a little bit about turbulence. Hi, my name is Mr. O'Reilly Jr. Uh, you can see this is my father's car, uh, um, full-blown alcohol. So trying to work it out. Been a long time we race, so hopefully we get in the back today. <laughs> <laughs> How far does the car go? Uh, she do nines on the quad, but um, we hopefully to get back in the fives. How much and miles? How much miles? How much miles power? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Right, Tell me what to slip. Today. <laughs> All right, good. Thanks again, Mr. O'Reilly. We'll look your good luck, okay? Right. Very well. Again, Earl, we have Team Shrek in the building. Last year, our against the St. Martin team. This is the truck who created the upset against St. Martin team. I want to ask... One of the crew chief and them here, what they expecting today and what we have in store for the people of the Virgin Islands. Pure excitement. Um, Shrek, uh, we've been we've been working on this vehicle real diligently from uh from since uh, yesterday until one o'clock in the morning. Uh, trying to you know get it consistent, trying to get adjusted to the track. And trust me, the people are in for a very good show, and uh, we're gonna make sure that we take this for the second time. Yeah. Well, uh, well, for the second time. Well, what's this? And let me tell you, let me tell you something. <laughs> my drive, my guy here, that the boss man here, yeah, he, he is he, ready. He ready. He's ready okay. for Freddy. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, that's what we want to hear. We want to feel the energy here in Saint Croix because, like I tell you, Earl, the crew and them ain't afraid. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> the Reaper man. <laughs> So now once again, Earl, we're there in the homegrown camp. One of our local guys and one of our top runners who run in America, Puerto Rico, and the man who ain't afraid of nothing, Mr. Tano himself. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about his car. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. It's a 05 Chevy Cavalier built right here on the island from the chassis to... The bodywork, painting, everything was done here on the island. Just so that we could compete with, you know, and have fun. It was a project that me and my son started. He went off to the Air Force and now I'm playing with it. This actually was supposed to be something for his for he to drive. Right. And I then the outside. Yeah. But, no, tell us Tell us how fast you go. Tell us how quick to the eight you run. Well, Let us know about the, about the, the quickest I've been to the eight, uh -huh. like 550. Five, wow. I ain't there yet because I'm working out some bugs, some stuff that I was, you know, moving around in the car to get a car to hook up. Right. I'm getting there, mm -hmm. but so to them, I, you know, I'm still playing with it. So by the time the night is over, I should get back in the fives. Let me ask and, you a million dollar question. You have any eight, 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 um? You have any interest in the St. Martin team with you today? A colliders and with the with the homegrown team and St. Martin, or you're gonna work out the bugs and the kings and next time around? What 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 are we talking about? A, a, a race? A or, race. Well, if they line up against me, I mean running bracket. Right. The thing is, they gotta give me leg. And if they could catch me to the bottom. <laughs> hey, when the race is over, you say, hey, 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 I ain't care how big you be. Once we run in bracket, right. you got to give me leg. Are you faster than me? Well, once again, we want to tell you thanks again. We wish you good luck. And this is Team Homegrown. Thank you. All right. Once again, Earl, we're here with Mr. Lloyd Daniel. If you know about Mr. Lloyd, you know Mr. Lloyd being together here for a long time. He was a salesman. He owned his own business right now. And right now, he's the proud owner of how much, how much generation Blue Hell have you owned? It's the third one. This is the third generation Blue Hell. Mr. Daniel, tell us a little bit more about your car today. Well, you know, first of all, I'd like to extend a welcome, a happy welcome to all our guests from St. Martin here. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm really proud to have them here. I'm happy that they're here. We're going to have a tremendous evening tonight. Uh, and and uh, having said that ab about the car, this is the third generation of Blue Hell. Uh, it's a 1972 Chevy Vega. Mm -hmm. uh, we want a big black Chevy. 
And uh, well, we're bracket racers. We we don't really do much. We, have, uh, we don't really do anything in the in the way of match racing. Right. We don't we don't seek to uh, bet and all that kind. We like to have fun. <laughs> right. We like to right. keep keep it fun and simple. And bracket race bracket race is a poor man's sport. Mm -hmm. As you know, right. bracket racing means that if you bring grandma's car, mm -hmm. you could run Blue Hill. Right. Yeah, I exactly. wouldn't. I wouldn't exactly run you, but <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can run Blue Hell, and I would encourage everybody to join the sport because uh, you know a long time ago people used to think that drag racing is a tremendously expensive sport, but not anymore because times have changed, technology have changed, and now you can run on a minimum budget right. in a working man's sport now. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't be afraid to come to the track, see how we are here, see the safety aspect of it. If you think that. Perhaps there gonna there's some issue here that uh, requires uh, any special training. That's not necessarily so. So we have professionals here. We can encourage and train and guide and mentor anyone. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a female driver here today. Wow! Imagine that, huh? That's good. We have a female. We have a female driver here today. Very good. That is, uh, I would say, second to none. Okay. She is first class. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we're not taking advantage of the fact that we have the fastest female driver in this area, in the Caribbean. Okay. She's been there, she's done it, she's yeah. proven herself, and she's in the car today. And, uh, you know, again, you know, we, we don't only have the fastest driver, right. we have the fastest car. We have the number two car in the nation right. on this property here. Right. And we take, we, and we downplay all this. Mm -hmm. We have the only Wally right. on the, on, in the Caribbean area here. Right. On St. Croix, mm -hmm. we have the number two car in the nation. When I say number two in the nation, you got to remember that we have a situation where this car ran number two in the United States of America. Right. Number two in the United States of America, that's right. Gary Thomas. That's Gary Thomas. Right. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot to be proud of here. Mm -hmm. uh, at home, no, no man is king in his own land. Exactly. But fortunately, we have what it takes and we have demonstrated our ability to compete on a national level. Right. And, and for that, I'd like to say again, thanks to our guests. You're welcome. We appreciate having you here. And let's race. Before you leave, Mr. Daniel, you know, I was uh, reaching out with Mr. Thomas and Mr. Epperson. And also, and I don't know how Mr. Uh, Mr. Daniels feel about this. We want to do an open fair to the young kids, the elementary kids, the junior high kids. An open fair meaning they come and we tell them about the cars. We show them how the car, let them sit down in the cockpit and get them interested from the um, elementary standpoint. Mr. Daniel, how do you feel about this? Well, good. I, I'm glad you brought it up. I, I've been thinking about this for some time. There's some other aspect of that, some other issues I'd like to add to it. Some other programs we could do. Uh, we're probably going to do a swap meet. A swap meet means that you could bring all the old parts you have, stuff that I might not be using that someone up and coming could use. We can bring in a highway safety on this issue. You remember they brought the dummies here? There's still some dummies here. There's still some dummies here. I'm here. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, we can, bring, we can bring an atmosphere like the dummies. Mm -hmm. We can do a safety training. Right. I have uh, access to people who are versed in highway safety. Mm -hmm. And, and they're welcome to come on board and work with us. So, yeah, a lot of things we can do and we're willing to do in the future here as soon as, we, you know, we can get our other internal things going here. But, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. It's something we, do, we could do. All right. Once again, thanks, Mr. Daniel, the, four, the third generation of Blue Hell. And Al, let's go around the track. Once again, Earl, we're here with one of the representatives from Team St. Martin. This is... Team St. Martin. We have sold the car up on top, and now we're going to talk to one of the main men who I call every day. I love I, me and his brothers right now. I call him every day and harass him. I, he, he get tired of hearing my voice. We've been trying to make this happen from November. How you feel being here today, sir? Good afternoon. I'll introduce yourself to the camera. Yeah. This is James Richardson from St. Martin. This is James Richardson from St. Martin. I, I always feel good to be here. I've been coming here since 1995, and I always enjoy myself. This is the home away from home. I, uh, I was glad that I got in contact with Link and Vince and Gary, and we made this possible. But uh, we want to, what we're trying to do is continue to so we could improve the, this program so that you know the, the, the spectators will continue coming back to uh, to this racetrack. My car, I have it back in St. Martin. It's a Freddy Krueger 2. It's, it's a twins to the Freddy Krueger that just made a pass just now. And uh, everything is identical, and we plan to bring it on in the next few weeks. So in case we need a backup down here with this event, then we have a, we'll have a backup. All right. Tell us about the rest cars you brought. 
We have a we have a Mustang uh, that is a Mustang Ryan Mustang that is driven by uh, Raymond uh, Connor. Then we have uh, the Beretta, which is driven by uh, Woods Joseph Woods, and then we have uh, the Mustang that is driven by uh, Leroy Liebert. And It's a problem for us to maintain. Maintaining is one, but then be able to, to test and make sure that they are in, in, in racing condition is very difficult because we don't have a racetrack back in St. Martin. Oh, yeah, so that's our problem. You know. So what? Roughly how much? How much would you spend on a car like where you have the pretty good to like? We talk about eighty, eighty-five thousand dollars. That's correct. Yeah. As a as a sport, you come in rich and leave broke. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Okay. Tell us, tell us about your excitement. The last time here you spoke, we talked about what y'all did, what y'all, what y'all, what y'all did in Nevis. Tell us a little bit more how y'all did it in Nevis and what it was all about. Yeah, the only stop problem with Nevis, I I personally wasn't in Nevis. I had too much work to do, so one of my driver, if you talk to my driver in a later interview, then you can explain how, you know, how it was in okay. Nevis. Alright. Okay? So but, we're gonna hit we 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 we're gonna leave it behind and find out more a little about the Nevis issue. Alright. Anyhow, thanks for having me here today. Alright. Thanks again. Um this is Mr. Vince Epperson. Easy FP. This is Mr. Vince, Mr. Vince Epperson, one of the um, managers here on the track. As we go on to the um, the boot here. Just like I said, you saw he didn't even break to see that green. Good drivers would leave on the last yellow light. By the time the car rolls, before it could even red light, it's already crossing the beam. So good driving skills. Don't wait. They don't wait until they see the green light comes on. They're leaving just on the last yellow. I'm in control boot, Mr. O'Reilly. Come on. Is one of the owners for Turbulence, which his son just gave you the interview on the top. Mr. O'Reilly gonna show us the lights. He gonna demonstrate to us about everything here. He gonna introduce the, the people and them. This is the management point of the race, the, where, the, where the racers do the lights and everything. Mr. O'Reilly, tell us about, about yourself first and tell us about this great, you know, what's happened up here. Hey, well, um, it's good to see Channel 8. I guess it's in our channel. Sound six in the house, man. Um, drag racing is on the move, as you can see in the background. Probably that drag racing is making a turnaround here in the Virgin Islands. Um, a lot of good things are happening. Um, we got a beautiful, a lot of cars from St. Martin. We have like four cars over from St. Martin, with some others scheduled to come in. But the drag racing today, guys are kind of sorting the cars out. But we look forward to a good match race this evening. But drag racing in the Virgin Islands is back, and I know that St. Thomas has been looking forward to seeing us get our track back together so they could come over. So exciting things, drag racing here in the Virgin Islands is on the move. And I look forward to seeing a lot of good things come out of what, what's happening here. What you have here right in front of you is the timing system. And what you do is um, it, you, you plug in the racing. It's a new timing system that we purchased a few years back. And it allows us to electronically time the cars. Uh, the cars go in and they give their reaction time, red light, dial in, brake out everything that a driver needs to know to properly tune their car and, and, and win races. So this is some new systems that we have here with um, the CDRA that has just re recently been purchased. So excited to see what drag racing is going to do for the Virgin Islands here in the short future. Thanks once again, Mr. O'Reilly. Earl, we're going to take you to the truck and see how these cars warm up and burn out, okay? This is how the big boys play Earl. Can you feel it? I see the camera vibrate as the car do the burnout. That's Mr. Hector. As we speak to him and he's going to let us know a little bit more about the Royster was here on the track today. Talk to us, Mr. Hector. Tell us about your car. Tell us about the burnout, if you appreciate how the burnout. Uh, tell us about why they burn out and, and you know, what, what they do when they burn out. The people and them don't know. Explain to them what's going on. Hey, good evening. Um, uh, my car name is um, Street Legal 2. It's a Mustang. Um, one of the versions of the Mustangs. Uh, pretty much, um, my particular car don't have a lilac brake, so what we do is we step on the, um, on the brake in the car and pop the clutch, and that's how you do the bono for now. I have some lilac coming for the car right now. Um, this is uh, one of those um, 
special built Mustangs um, from the States. Um, doing pretty decent time. I, I wouldn't expose my time right now because the car is pretty much, I built the car to run match race. So that's pretty much it. So that's how we're running. As you can see, we just made, um, this is our second pass of the evening with the, uh, with the car. Um, we, we have some match races that we plan to run, so we just um, just getting the driver pretty much acclimated with the car and um, getting ready for these future match races we have coming up. Well do, well do Mr. Hector. Um, you know, um, tell us a little bit more about your driver in the cockpit and um, tell, tell, tell us some more about your car. What, for how long have you been in this sport of racing? Tell, tell, tell us a little bit more than what you're telling us. Uh, well, I've been in the, in the sports from in the 90s, mid-90s. I had another uh, Mustang, a 1987 Mustang, that was um, the um, street legal, original street legal. Um, back then, it was myself and um, Alvarez Tutain, who was the mechanic and driver of the car. Um, since then, I moved up to a different car, which is the 2008 Roush Mustang that I have now. I've uh, been in the business for a while. Um, the driver that just drove the car, his name is Louis Centron. He is, um, he's pretty much been in the business for a good while. Um, he had a car himself, a gray Mustang LX um, that um, did great. And so the, um, the car has been doing um, pretty good. The driver is just getting acclimated with the car, like I said. Um, he's doing good. This is the second night out. Um, we were here last night and we're back here again tonight just to make some passes and get ready for the big races. Once again, thanks Mr. Hector and wish you good luck, okay? Very well. Once again, we have in, 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 in Ice Age, driven by Felix, and we have the Vagabond, that will be the Mustang from St. Martin. We have Felix, and we have Vagabond from St. Martin, who is li lining up right now, warming up the tires here on the CDRA track, getting it together. we're here with the Paris Brothers. The Paris Brothers is one of our up and coming street cars. Everybody who have came against this team have been defeated. Mr. Paris, yes, sir. good afternoon. Welcome yes, back to the track. I know the last time you came here we had a little problem with the car. Yeah, I, I, the car was uh, broken down. I broke the transmission. My brother was driving mm -hmm. and we was able to walk all day today and have the transmission repaired. And you know, we come out here to put on some more licks and anybody that come to test us, you know. So we are inviting the public to come out and you know, what look at the cars and have a good time. Bring out the family, you know. All right. Thank you. No, no, no. We ain't done yet, okay. man. We, we, I want you to tell me a little bit about the car. Tell me, tell me, I want you, first thing I want you to tell me a little bit about the car. And tell me in what direction are you looking to go with the car and what title are you looking for? And the street, because we know it's a street car, right? Yes. It have a registration? Yes. Okay. And it have a license plate, right? Yes. So it's a street car. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the car, Mr. Paris. Well, um, the car is a twin turbo Mustang, the only twin turbo in the Virgin Islands. Um, it took me about three years to build the car. Uh, fully street legal, got everything on it, and right now we're just trying to be the king on the streets. So we challenge anybody, any street car to come and run us. Anybody, any challengers, any race day, as long as we're up, we'll take on any challengers. The, the name of the car is Category 5. I put the car together, my brother here, built the engine for me. Uh, it took us about three years to get everything together, and it's working good, it's working fine. 
All right. Definitely. Next time, I definitely want to see everybody on the racetrack next time. And we for upcoming Police Week, we will try to put on an event for Police Week. And if everybody come. It will be a nice, safe environment for, to, for you to bring out the kids and have fun. All right. Well, you know, you know, out of your camp, I, I, I heard, you know, like you talk about your brother. And, and the sport respect your brother because your brother is a diehard racer also. Your, bro, your brother ain't it right? He have a car also, right? Yeah, my brother have a single turbo Mustang that we're working on right now. Hopefully we could get it done in about two months. If I could take some two time off of VIP the walk. <laughs> and I don't know the name of his car yet, but it's supposed to be performing just as good as mine own, but not he still can't beat me. <laughs> All right, so let me ask a question in the future what you're trying to say, we're gonna have a brother and brother fight or what? Definitely. All they gonna right. be a brother and brother grudge match. <laughs> Look out, coming soon. <laughs> All right, thank you. Once again, you hear it here at CDRA Sports Complex, and you heard what they said, Category 5. Want to be the number one street racer here in the Virgin Islands. Earl, take me to the world. We have the Gary Thomas Animal Team here making their way on the wet grounds to warm up the tire. Uh, Mr. Gary Thomas, you know, one of the competitors, as he say, he have went to Orlando. He have went uh, throughout the Caribbean racing with this uh, cobalt. Uh, one of the second, they say, fastest car pong for pong in America. He's going to make his debut here and, and show you why he holds that record. Earl, once again, we have the animal team is lining up to race Mr. Gary Thomas. Mr. Rinch is going to put on, warm up the tires and get it on as they go down, as he go down the track and make his debut here at the CDRA Racing Complex. Track. Mr. Jimmy Wrench in the cockpit. This is what everybody been waiting for. This is the this is the number two car here. Who have raced in Orlando, Puerto Rico, San Martin, Aruba. This is what it's all about. Spinning the whole way. These cars here got so much power, they're looking for a perfect track with you know, it, it takes a while for a track to come around. Um, so a lot of, by the time they're on the line, they have to be, several cars have to run. So it takes race day after race day to build up the surface to eventually be able to put down the power for these type of cars. I mean, our, the other cars that we have here can handle the track, but more of these heavy powered cars need a perfect track with a lot of traction on it. So this here just shows that the track is coming around. We're getting back into the drag racing scene and eventually the track will come around where this car will surely be able to go down the track. Again, CDRA is back. Gary Thomas saying another time to rest. Gary's bringing down his second car, which is a dragster driven by Miss V. Okay, this is sweet. I love to see this car run. Again, driven by a female. Watch how this car runs. Miss V is behind the wheel, a female behind one of the most powerful cars here on the track today. Earl, once again, I'm here with one of the youngest league. guys here from St. Martin. You know, as I walk around the track, I hear that bragging off and making some trend. 
Tell me what you were just saying. Tell them, like, tell the people that they're not watching. Island champion from St. Martin is here. What? Yeah, the champion is here. I just got one thing to say, no. Uh -huh. I'm gonna wish for it. If they don't hook up, Freddy all over them. <laughs> I guess it's what it said, Martin fellow say, you know. He said, if you don't hook up, Freddy the all over you. So the, the St. Martin race has just said so on the mic, okay? Earl. <laughs> across the nation has been winning, making a name for the Virgin Islands across the United States. Gary Thomas. And the wheel behind the wheel is a female, so big up to all the females. Going fast. And she's probably, this car is one of the fastest cars on the track today. So let's hope she makes a good pass, but we want to see this car in the program. It's feet. You didn't like the burnout, so watch out, he's gonna, she's gonna make another burnout. Watch out, she handles this car. Again, this tractor's gonna be running against the National Guard tractor. If you're not paying attention, you know this is not doing that big smoky burnout as before. Remember I told you to keep a cutie. Yeah, we come on behind here, he's on turn on the computer, wants to turn, so he can see him and set the car up. Go back again and try and take out some more power out of the car. Again, it all is in the tuning, and that's what makes it challenging as a racer. You not only could you build a good quality product, but now it's all about the tuning. And the better the person that can tune the car is going to be the champion at the end of the day. So watch out for Gary. They're going to be playing around with this car. I'm sure by the time the race starts, they're going to have that car working right. Let's pass where I went, but I know it happened. Um, let me get back to this. <laughs> the number nine, eight, and nine, the 14 machines and equipment include your poll book, Mr. So any questions, Mr. Weber, you could give us any update on it, other than the document that uh, the purchase and the, I think I saw a copy of a letter where Ms. Maduro wrote Mr. Abramson advising him that the movement from where they were in St. Thomas, the uh, Sibeli property, to the new Banco Popular property, have been completed to be completed in compliance with ADA. So basically, I think Mr. Abramson and the governor need to correspond with the EAC and the appropriate agencies to notify them that they know ADA compliant in St. Thomas. So I don't know, that was one question I had to Mr. Abramson, but since he can be here, we need to find Mr. Ab this gentleman here to pursue that Avenue because Ms. Maduro wrote Mr. Abramson, and since she will be gone, Mr. Abramson, absence Mr. Weber, would now have to take up that responsibility to ask Mr. Governor De Young and also to ask them to come up to date with a certificate that you have now to get from EDA that you are now in a building ADA compliant in St. Thomas, 
and for them to issue the certificate for them to be having access accordingly to the have a funds to purchase the machine. In addition, if in fact, I think I, they had a bill that was passed when uh, Senator Russell was the president that had to do with voting machines to buy voting machines and control mm -hmm. elections. So we need to find out, Mr. Weber, the status of that appropriation from the budget office in addition to what um, needs to be done for the governor to write the letter and ask these uh, what are these people named? This young lady from, she's a band, what's her name? The young lady band, she worked with the governor's office for handicap. Oh, yeah. Jack, Stephanie. Stephanie, to get in touch with her to, to inspect the property. We'll take a, a two minute break before we go, Mr. Williams. Do you have a question? No, that's what I think. You need to write a letter to them. I mean, who's going to act in a capacity to officially do that? I will write a letter to them. Okay, that will I'll get it done. Okay. We'll take a two-minute break for the recording to be changed. 